Alabama lawyer David Schoen became an instant celebrity this month as one of Donald Trump's legal team during his Senate impeachment trial. He also drew attention when he covered his head repeatedly while drinking a glass of water. As an Orthodox Jew trying to keep in line with religious law while avoiding the wearing of a yarmulke, the traditional Jewish skull cap there in the Senate chamber. Now, our senior U.S. correspondent Mike Wagenheim spoke with him about his experience at the trial, also what's been dubbed Yamaka Gate, and his vast experience delving also into Israeli law. Let's take a listen. David Schoen, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a busy, busy few weeks for you. Looking back on this impeachment trial, what are your thoughts on this experience? Well, you know, from the start, I felt it was a big mistake to bring it. I think it was bad for the American people. I think that it uh, very much hurt the cause of unity and healing in this country in a very divided country. But uh, the experience itself, once it began, was for me uh, historic and awe-inspiring to be in that Senate and to be able to address 100 senators like that. It was a unique experience for me. I made it, uh, frankly, a whole family affair. My, I worked with my wife and children beforehand uh, collaborating really as a civics lesson to put together our presentation and to talk about the Constitution, the various provisions involved, and all of that. And they were very, very helpful. Let's uh, try to put a uh, wrap on a uh, yarmulke gate. Tell us exactly <laughs> what happened and uh, what what were you trying to do. And let, let's just let's just tie a bow on this whole matter, can we? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's always you know kind of an awkward decision for me to make when I go to court just before the judge. I wear my yarmulke. I made a decision a long time ago never to wear it in front of a jury because of an incident that happened once in a case in Brooklyn, um, anti-Semitic jurors, and it was, it was a big incident. And I'm afraid that it inures to the client's detriment. People make a judgment when they see the yarmulke, and sometimes it's not good. So I made a decision during these proceedings not to wear my yarmulke when I was addressing the Senate. Some days I forgot it was on. I walked in with it, and people said, why is he wearing it today? I really didn't think it would be an issue. Then when I made my presentation, I didn't have the yarmulke on. And for me, it's unusual or awkward to be drinking something or eating something without my yarmulke on. I was conscious of it. I first made my bracha. I covered my head just to say, you know, God is above us and I'm making this bracha and so on, sanctify that moment. And then each time I was drinking, I was covering my, I didn't have anything else available. So I covered my head with my hand. And then that became sort of a viral story. And it was a little embarrassing and awkward, but I understand it's, it's unusual. So. You have been involved with uh, Israeli law for quite some time now. You've represented everybody from victims of terror at the hands of the Palestine Liberation Organization and the Palestinian Authority under the Anti-Terrorism Act uh, in America to uh, mafia members in Israel and extradition issues. It has crossed the spectrum. Uh, can, you, can you give us a little bit of background on your dealings uh, with the Israeli side of the, the criminal justice system? Well, first of all, I love Israel with all of my heart, as does my whole family. So any opportunity I have to do any work related to Israel, I jump at. But the Anti-Terrorism Act cases against the terrorists on behalf of American victims of terrorism are some of the most important and meaningful cases I've ever done. They were sad. I cried my way through most of uh, the time of those cases. Um, innocent young people, older people lost their lives. Um, I was very grateful to Shirad Adin for bringing me in to litigate those cases. And I was able to, at the time I was in them, you know, I was handling it by myself, frankly. I would travel to Israel, took depositions from arch terrorists, um, including Ahmed Sadat and, and others, the PFLP, and uh, very meaningful litigation. My uh, um, work on, in criminal cases, you're thinking, I think, prim uh, primarily of Eitan Chia and, and uh, some others. Um, again, I was uh, honored to work on those cases. I think they raised important issues, and I it was important for me to get an Israeli back to Israel on the transfer, and I've kept in touch with them and so on. Um, but uh, I also, another very gratifying experience, I was able to emcee a, a, a proceeding at the UN with Ambassador Danone on uh, the idea of getting compensation for victims of terrorism and trying to use the compensation uh, procedure, that is using our courts, to try to make an impact on making it inadvisable, let's say, for some of these terrorist organizations to continue their pattern of violence. You know, you have worked for much of your career and have received a number of awards for what most people would term more liberal causes, criminal justice reform, ballot access, human rights, things of that nature. You find yourself on one of the biggest stages in the world representing a man that liberals have come to absolutely despise. 
what 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 was that like? Did, did, are you able to put aside those things as, as a lawyer, going from somebody um, a, you know defending a, um, a person who may be oppressed, persecuted, to defending what was until a few weeks ago the leader of the free world? Absolutely. First of all, I honestly felt that my role in this case was to defend the Constitution as well as Donald Trump, and I was honored to represent both of them. Frankly, um, yeah. Listen, I represented the Democratic Party in the past at trial. This election cycle, I represented a socialist candidate for president to get her on the ballot in D.C., which we were able to do. Um, but you're right. My background is civil rights and criminal defense work. However, I think in all of those cases that I've chosen to handle, uh, just about, it's been the Constitution that was at stake and at issue in the case. And I love our Constitution, and I believe in fighting to uphold it. I think there were very important constitutional principles at play here. I think this was the political weaponization of the constitutional impeachment process by the Democratic Party for partisan purposes, and I find that offensive as an American. Yeah, I read a little bit of your background. It seems you take on very few cases every year and want to uh, really go deep into each matter before it arrives at trial, make sure you know the ins and outs, that you've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You were thrust into this impeachment trial with very little notice. Your role was kind of undefined heading in. It, was, it had to have been a crash course for you. How did you handle it? That was very difficult. I didn't sleep much. I'll tell you, it comes on the heels of um, my family getting hit very, very badly with uh, the COVID virus. And uh, excuse me, I lost my mother uh, just a couple weeks before this. And uh, she was the best friend for all of our family. So it was very difficult emotionally also. But you're right, we had basically one week to prepare. And uh, I have to say the president was very, very gracious throughout this. He called me up himself uh, at the beginning to ask if I would be interested. I said I would think about it. And then finally, when I concluded that I would do it, very, very gracious. And he said to me at one point, I want you to handle this case by yourself. And I said, after the South Carolina group was out, and I said, that's not possible. I'm literally a solo practitioner. I have no office staff. I do everything just by myself. In this case, as I say, I had my family helping me. But, uh, and so then another firm was hired to help. But the president was just tremendously supportive throughout all of this. And he knew my background as a civil rights lawyer, which maybe in some sense was an asset, but maybe not. I just tried my best to do the best job I could for him. In the end, it, the, the defense was uh, ripped apart a bit uh, by the uh, the media, by uh, Democrats, by even some Republicans, especially your co-counsel, Bruce Castor, some other uh, members of the defense. Did it hit you particularly hard? Did you feel like you were prepared heading in? Do you feel like you made a good enough case considering that uh, 57 senators voted to, um, to uh, convict President Trump? Yeah, well, first of all, I think all of the Democratic votes were clearly political. Um, but secondly, uh, listen, every senator is entitled to vote his or her conscience. Um, I don't think it's fair for any senator to, have, senator to have voted to convict in this case, if for no other reason than that by the House manager's own account, we just don't know the facts. I would never suggest that in any proceeding in any country where life or liberty is at stake, any judgment should be made without all of the facts. So I think that was unfair. I also didn't think it should have been there. In terms of, um, you know, there's a lot of gossip in the media. And uh, I've given some interviews that I regret, frankly. But everybody in this case did the best he or she could. I thought the media was brutal at times. But uh, I have to say, President Trump stood by me at all times, was very upbeat. And he encouraged me to assert myself more and that sort of thing. After all, he said he had personally had hired me in the case, and he was counting on me. And, um, you know, I missed uh, Shabbat because of, uh, and that turned out to be a key part, closing argument, question and answer period. But instead, I developed this video presentation that I made as effective as I could. David Schoen, we thank you so much for taking the time. It's been a whirlwind few weeks. We hope you are able to uh, rest a bit here and uh, have a happy Purim. Again, thanks so much for joining us. Be well, be healthy. Happy Purim. Thank you very much. It's an honor.